So now I want to talk to you about convolutions of distributions and antiderivatives of distributions. This is sort of the final bit of calculus of distributions I really want to talk to you about, and it's going to allow us to sort of tie the whole loop of this whole Laplace transform and some of its applications. And then once we establish the integration property, the convolution property, and we already have the derivative property of Laplace transforms, this allows us to talk about some things like PID controllers and using the S domain for the design of these controllers. So why don't we go ahead and start with convolutions and let's start with convolutions of functions. So if you have two functions on the real line, their convolution is actually another function. And this is given as say h of t is equal to the integral of negative infinity to infinity of f of t minus tau times g of tau d tau. And this integral is our function. And this is a convolution and we write this as f star g. Turns out that f star g is the same as g star f. And that means that we satisfy a commutivity property. And there's also an associated property that you can verify with just a change of variables. We would like to be able to take this convolution definition and find some way to analogize it to distributions. A lot the same way that we analogize differentiation of regular distributions to all distributions. So that's what we're gonna try to do here. We're gonna take this convolution f star g and we're gonna take a look and see what happens when we cast it as a regular distribution. And so if we were to cast it as a regular distribution, we should look and see what happens when we apply it to a function out of L. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take F star G and I'm gonna multiply it times U out of L. And then I'm gonna integrate from minus infinity to infinity. And this is the action of a regular functional. Now F star G is itself an integral. So I can go ahead and expand that. And then next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that T minus tau and I'm gonna replace it with another variable. I'm gonna replace it with say new. And then I'm gonna take tau and I'm gonna replace it with C. And once I do that, then I have this equation here. It is the double integral where we go from minus infinity to infinity of f of eta times g of c, and then this times u of eta plus c. And so that's really interesting because if you look at that, that u term is now a function of two variables. And, but the integration is only taken with respect to one at a time. So we can go ahead and we can say, take the integral from minus infinity to infinity of g of c times u of eta plus c. And what we see there is that this itself on the interior is a function of nu. And so then if that function itself is in L, we can think of applying f to that as a regular functional. So then essentially what we've done is this. We've taken our u and we've turned it into a function of two variables. And then we treat it as a function in L for each individual variable separately. And so then we first apply our regular distribution G, and then we apply the regular distribution F, and each application corresponds to a different variable. So what you ultimately get when you take the regular distribution corresponding to a convolution, you get something that is called the tensor product of distributions. And so we're gonna go ahead and take this and we're gonna use this to give a definition of the convolution of two distributions. Okay, so that's exactly what we're gonna to try to do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and define the convolution of two distributions as being the tensor product of those two. And what this means is that if we take that tensor product and we apply it to some u, we're going to take that u and treat it as a function of two variables where we replace t with eta plus c. And then we apply each of these distributions to them separately. So for instance, if I had distributions t and s, then I'm gonna apply s with respect to one variable first, then I'm apply t with respect to other variable. That is a convolution of two distributions. But if it's really gonna be a convolution of distributions, we wanna make sure that it has one very important thing. And what that is, is that we want the Laplace transform applied to this convolution to be the product of the Laplace transforms of the individual distributions. And this actually follows really easily. Now we have this whole sequence definition for a Laplace transform of a distribution, but I'm gonna go ahead and use an abusive notation and just say we're applying these distributions directly to e to the minus st. It's not exactly correct, but it's close enough that it's not really gonna be a problem. And that's why we call this an abusive notation. And so what we do is we apply it to e to the minus st. But remember, we're replacing t with eta plus c. And then with the properties of exponential functions, I can split that exponential. And then we have an e to the minus s eta times an e to the minus s c. And 
Each one of those is a function of a different variable. So if we're going to apply our convolved distribution to this, that means we apply, say, s with respect to one variable and t with respect to the other variable. And well, out of the first one, we can factor out one of those exponentials. And then we just end up with a product of these two distributions apply to the exponential of their respective variables. And well, there you go. That is the little pot transfer convolution. And that's that. Now let's see how we can define an antiderivative of a convolution. And this is pretty cool. Okay, so now we want an antiderivative. Now there's one really nice property of convolutions of functions that we should keep in mind. And that is if the functions themselves are supported only on the half line zero to infinity, then the convolution itself is also only gonna be supported there. If we were to take say the heavy side function and just viewing this as a function for a moment, not as a distribution, then that means that if we take the convolution with the heavy side function with say G, then the ultimate result is that we have the antiderivative of G. And that's pretty cool. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and try to take a look at this heavy side function as a distribution itself. As a distribution, the heavy side function is the integral of a function inside of our space L. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my heavy side distribution and I can go ahead and I can convolve it with another distribution. And so by analogy, since we know if that distribution corresponded to a regular distribution, then that would be antiderivative of the symbol for the regular distribution. So then we let this become our definition of an antiderivative of a distribution. And what's really nice is that if we were to take, say, the Laplace transform of this antiderivative of a distribution, we have the Laplace transform of the heavy side distribution, which is one over s, times the Laplace transform of our distribution. And this agrees with what we saw for the Laplace transforms of antiderivatives back in ordinary differential equations. And so there you go. That is a nice clean construction for an antiderivative of a distribution. And this is one of those amazing properties that came out of all this work that Schwartz did back in the early 20th century. And he ended up getting a Fields Medal for this back in 1950. So I really appreciate everybody who's come by and subscribed since I started the series. And I'm gonna do my best to live up to your expectations. In any case, thank you for watching. Please boop that like button. And until next time, have a great day.